Good morning. Welcome to Coffee with KPP Live, the show that's dedicated to providing you with advice for life so that you can live richly and realize the life that you've earned. This is episode 12. It is the last episode of 2020, and I'm joined with my partner and associate, associate Ben Hopper. Hi, everyone. Hope you all are doing well. Had a great Christmas and are looking forward to the end of the year and the start of next year. Enjoy your New Year's Eve safely. Right? We, right? We don't want any more surprises at the end of 2020, and we want to start off 2021 yeah. as good as we possibly can. We know it's going to be another weird holiday. We had Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Are, we know they're all going to feel different this year than they have any other year. So, like Kyle said, hope you all enjoy it safely and see some family, see some friends. But, um, yeah. That's it. And at Kentucky Planning Partners, we've seen a lot of change this year, as we all have. Actually, this show came about as a result of the changes in the world. And what we're going to talk about today are lessons learned from 2020. There are countless lessons that I think we can all learn, but Ben and I have put our heads together and we've come up with a couple personal lessons that we're going to talk about. And a couple financial lessons as well when it comes to managing money, financial planning, and your financial future. So this is really going to be a look back on the year, and uh, I think it's going to be introspective for both of us. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to really take those lessons that we've learned from the past year, apply them to 2021 so we can move forward better, stronger, and more prepared to help you realize the life that you've earned, quite frankly. Exactly. And, and this kind of speaks to a different, in my mind, a different aspect of our job as financial advisors. You know, lately you've heard us talk about, last week we talked about ETFs, exchange traded funds. We've talked about financial planning, how we do our models. We've talked about 401ks. We had Bill Ross and another advisor on, and a lot of that is kind of black and white financial planning related stuff. But this is more of a kind of financial coaching. And mm -hmm. part of being an advisor is not just those black and white concepts that we learn when we're in college or studying for the CFP or something like that. This is more of the emotional aspect and the psychological aspect of financial planning, which is coaching, quite frankly. That's right. I mean, any everybody, if you ask every single person on the street randomly, why are you investing in your 401k or what do you want your money to do? I think that's the more key question. What do you want your money to do? And if you ask yourself that, everybody's going to say the same thing. I want my money to grow. Grow. <laughs> well, it's a very simple answer, but quite frankly, grow for what? Grow toward what purpose? For what reason do you want it to grow? And being a financial planner and being a financial advisor, it's really important to have those conversations and make sure that we're listening to our clients and find the purpose behind it. So mm -hmm. you're so right. So let's talk about lessons learned. Um, in 2020, personally, for me, one of the things that I've thought about more than anything is the fragility of it all the fragility of our health the fragility of our system of the markets to the economy to the ability to to earn a living because i'll tell you going into 2020 if somebody told me that in this year we were going to see over a million people pass away lose their lives because of a pandemic we're going to see more than 30 percent decline in the market we're going to see joblessness riots in the street and social unrest, I would think that we'd be coming into the new year of 2021 with with the hope that we'll be able to have a future, mm -hmm. if anything, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a great podcast that I was introduced to this year. One of the things that came out of this is a great podcast called The Happiness Lab with Dr. Lori Santos. I encourage all that listen to this podcast to get that and subscribe. And in the first episode, she talks about just this, in that if I were to tell you that, Ben, if somebody said, in 2020, what's it going to look like? And I were going to tell you to a T what it was going to be, mm -hmm. how would you feel? Not good. I'd feel dismal. I'd feel hopeless. And, you know, we hope that through this all, like Kyle said, I mean, it could be a lot worse right now. Given all that's happened, we think that the future is quite bright to be frank. Exactly. And to the point, right, in the happiness lab, you would think the world would be coming apart. But 
I think in lieu of all this, the fragility of it all, and no matter how bad things are, to be able to take stock in how we've grown from this, how, what, what, what have we, can we take away from this so that we can move forward better, stronger, stronger communities, stronger families, stronger individuals. Um, if you've lost your job, perhaps, maybe it was a situation that it allowed you to find a passion, or if you're looking for a passion, maybe you could utilize the opportunity to take a step back, slow down, so to speak, so that you could go faster in mm -hmm. the future because what Dr. Santos talks about in the Happiness Lab is when bad things happen, we expect the bad to be much, much worse than what really happens. And we also expect good things to be much better than what really happens. But how often have you heard somebody say, yes, that was a horrible experience, but I'm better for it. Exactly. Through this all, you learn, you learn things and ultimately, what you what the goal is is to learn from them and apply them to the future if you make a mistake what's the old adage you learn from it and you try not to do it again it's kind of the same thing here you got to learn from history learn from the past move forward and i think the baseline of it all is to just not not take things for granted uh, like Kyle said if you know there's been deaths there's been fragility everywhere so we have to know moving forward that you just can't take things for granted and you have to live and appreciate everything that we ha we have that's right and you know when it comes to financial planning so to speak you might be watching this thinking okay yeah take it for granted that's old cliche i get it but how many people do you know you yourself might be one where you're putting off saving you're putting off your your ability to earn or earn the time that you're looking forward to live your life and um a lesson that i have from this year is i'm very i'm very very grateful for this is when i was a young person i i i'm so grateful for my family uh, but you know we grew up very blue collar hard working family and i got my first job in corporate america when i was 18 and somebody said i don't care what you do but save as much as you can <laughs> save as much as you can because you'll thank me later. I know it's hard and just do it. But I've learned at 37, if I didn't start saving when I was 19 years old and putting every dime I could maxing out my 401k and the sacrifices it took, my wife and I had a lot of very difficult conversations over the last 15 years, but if I hadn't prepared, I wouldn't have been able to make this career transition and serve the people or, or have relationships with the people I'm serving as an advisor. So, so preparedness, you make your own luck. And I'm so grateful mm -hmm. to have received that advice, taken action. And no matter what happens in the world, you can still control your destiny and give yourself the opportunity to pursue your dreams as long as you're taking those steps necessary to do it today. So yes. don't put it off. Don't put off saving. Don't put yes. off chasing your goals yeah yeah have a plan i think that is the a summary of kind of what kyle just said is you have to have a plan whether it be a financial plan whether it be a plan for your career whether it be a plan for your family who knows whatever it is i think having a plan is what it all goes back to and you have to be intentional you have to know where you're going you have to set goals these are all things that when we experience a year like 2020 those are things that are going to help you get through those tough times to really continue moving forward. And That's right. Yeah. And, and I mean, how many, how many people had expectations for the year and to, to go on vacations with their family or start a new career, perhaps start a new business. Maybe there are people who are going to watch that, that had started a business and things change. But to be able to have a long-term perspective, a long-term vision, a support structure of people that you love, trust, and care about, you're never alone. And everything that you want to do, the more people that you have around you that you're able to bring into that circle and know 
you and what you want to be and know you who you want to serve and what you want to do will increase the likelihood that you do that. Because Absolutely. If you if you go it alone, yeah, you could succeed, but it's going to be exponentially more difficult. Having a network, having a network of people you trust, whether it be family, friends, colleagues, that's the key to a year like this is, is having that support. It's it's huge in my mind. And I've experienced it. I've experienced it with my family, friends, and people I work with here at KPP. It, it makes all the difference in the world when we struggle, when we have a year like this. The, it's the people around you that are going to push you to fight through it. That's right. That's right. And, um, and it, you know, it's ironic because with social distancing, um, it's more difficult to spend the time with the people that you love and care about. But just... 15 years ago, if this happened, our ability to connect with the, our audience via Facebook Live, our ability to do FaceTime with our loved ones, even if they're across the street and we can't go see them. Mm -hmm. It is such a blessing, I think, to be able to focus on that which we have mm -hmm. in lieu of all this. And I just hope that we all look on what we've lost or what we've sacrificed in the spirit of realizing just how strong we can be together and if we can get through this year and with an optimistic outlook of 2021 mm -hmm. and with hope and with enthusiasm for what the future will hold 2020 was bad it carried a lot of challenges mm -hmm. and it could get worse right it could be worse some people say well how could it get any worse it Good. <laughs> but don't you think, doesn't it feel like there's a whole lot more better? There's a whole lot the, better to look forward the to. Upside, the upside, I think, is huge. And things like the Zoom and the virtual world that we live in now and all that we've encountered, it, it speaks to the resiliency of America. I think the resiliency of people whenever challenges come up, whenever the year that we have had has happened, resiliency is, is what will get us through this and ultimately why I think that there's upside, why we think that there's bright hope for the future. We didn't want to make this podcast, this Facebook Live, all about looking back on 2020 and being dismal about it, but we wanted to reflect on it, talk about it at be the end real. of the year and be real. Mm -hmm. But then here in just a second, I think we're going to transition into 2021, what it, what it means to have the turn of a new year, what we can look forward to hopefully how to really improve on what we can improve on, how to set goals, how to really take the turn of the new year as a, as a starter for something really big in, in your lives and our lives. Mm -hmm. So, you first. <laughs> sure. So, <laughs> so I think, I think the, the big important thing is to set goals. You know, you've heard it. It's a little bit of an old adage, but it's so, so important. Mm -hmm. I found in my life that things that I've accomplished have been – because of, I've had goals. And so setting goals for the end of the year, what do you what do you want to accomplish in 2021 that you didn't get to in 2020? Mm -hmm. Some of this might be limited to, you know, COVID, what the future holds, what social distancing rules and guidelines apply. You might not be able to, you know, do everything you ever wanted to at the start of the year, but what are some things you can do? What are some things that you can control? And I, I would say if you're, whatever your goals are, I have found an incredibly powerful tool to be vision boards. So I want you to imagine if you're out there watching, you've probably been in the market for an automobile a car. You're trying to buy a new car. Now, when you're shopping for a new car, when you're driving down the road, you recognize every car that's on the street, right? Or if you're, if you're looking for red cars, all of a sudden red cars start popping out and you see which one you like, right? <laughs> but if you buy a new car, automatically every other car starts blending in with each other. Your, your brain is going to focus on that, what, that thing that you want, that you're focused on. And I can't encourage you enough, in my life I've had a lot of success with vision boards in that every day if you look at something, the likelihood of you realizing that dream is exponentially higher. I, I recall a story of a, an Olympiad, I'm just kind of spitballing here, but there's an Olympic athlete several years ago that got the world record. I forget who it was. I'm going to have to Google it, maybe put it in the, in the notes. But he or she 
put up on, I think it was a swimmer. It was a swimmer, the U of L swimmer here. She put up on her vision board or in her bedroom the world record times of the swimmers mm. before her. And she ended up crushing everybody. I forget <laughs> her name. But that's a perfect example of a vision board. If you're looking at something every day and you live it and you breathe it and it becomes part of who you are, you're most likely going to accomplish that. So, right. so you're right. Have goals, but make the goals a reality and tangible and mm-hmm. see them and share them with the people you love, your spouse, your children. Make collective family mm-hmm. goals and go do them because mm-hmm. you don't want to come to the end of the year with a regret. You want to come to the end of the year with memories. Right. And the most important thing about goals, Kyle, you kind of touched on it right there, is smart goals. You might have heard of that before, but anytime you make a goal, you want to be sure that it's not just out there in the sky. It's not just an unrealistic dream, so to speak. If you're making a goal, a SMART goal, it's a it's an acronym, S-M-A-R-T. You want to make it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and timely or time bound that's that's what a smart goal is i like that it's a it's a specific goal it's measurable there's a number on it you know if you want to lose weight then you can't just say i want to lose weight and expect it to happen you know how many pounds you is it 30 pounds is it 20 pounds is it 15 pounds who knows you have to make it attainable it's got to be doable it can't be totally unrealistic Mm. if it's relevant it has to be it has to make sense for your life it has to make sense for your path and where you want to go and then timely time bound you have to have set yourself a deadline you know when when do you want to lose weight do you want to lose weight 15 pounds by march do you want to lose it by june who if you put a time bound on it then you find yourself more likely to take all the steps necessary along that way to reach your goal by the deadline you set so making it specific measurable attainable relevant and timely is more likely that you're going to achieve your goals it's brilliant yeah. i love it that's great and you know it, it, with what we do as well financial planning we're building financial plans for people i guess mm-hmm. to tie it all in to mm-hmm. what we do that's right. these are the things that we're thinking about in the background mm-hmm. um because we might have people that come in that that want things that are unrealistic mm-hmm. and to manage expectations and a, achieve mm-hmm. those goals it's so important to be on the same page. Mm-hmm. And I just for I foresee a situation where we might have to look somebody in the eye and say, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. um, we're here to help you accomplish the best life that you can. Mm-hmm. And unless you do these, that, this, that, or the other thing, that goal is just not attainable. So right. having some accountability there is key. That's great. I love yeah. it. It's smart. Yeah, right? And it speaks to, you know, one of the big areas that we work in is sometimes life insurance. If, if someone, if there's a young family, for instance, and there's a, and a good income coming in and there's children term life insurance is going to be a key part of that financial plan and so if, if your goal if your thoughts are well, I want to get life insurance to go back to that smart goal analogy you need to know how much life insurance you need to have a goal as to when you want to have it in place by you need to know how long you want it for and that's just one example of, of how you can tie goal setting and moving forward and protection Mm -hmm. into your lives moving forward so yeah you know and and another thing too is is change i know change at times when we when we think about goals a lot of people gravitate towards the path of least resistance Mm -hmm. and don't accomplish them because they're difficult Mm -hmm. and i in my experience have found that difficult is the most fun (laughs) difficult are those things that are worth doing you don't hear that every day. Difficult is fun. It is. <laughs> Difficult is generally the most fun, right? Why do we Why do we climb mountains? Why do we go skiing? What, what, find the things that you love doing, whether it's horseback riding, playing sports, an artistic venture that you have, whatever it is. The feeling of accomplishment, right? Th- that's right. That's right. That dopamine hit you get when you <laughs> accomplish something, it, it's, it's probably difficult. But I'm here to tell you, Whatever it is that you incorporate into your life, it will become a habit and it will become fulfilling. It will become part of you. So if it is a workout routine, start small. Start by just getting up and putting your shoes on and walking for 15 minutes. If it is weight loss, 
go when you go to the grocery store, buy an apple instead mm -hmm. of I don't know, right? Yeah, you don't it's, it's you baby don't, steps. You don't need it's to make steps. huge changes, but small changes mm -hmm. will yield very large, massive results. And, and I, I think a good in our line of work, a good way to see that is in saving money. Yes. The, if you're if you've struggled with saving lately or if you want to have a plan to save and invest and build your net worth and grow financially, starting small is key. If it's fifty dollars a month, if it's twenty dollars a month, if it's hundred dollars a month, whatever your situation is, mm -hmm. starting somewhere is the biggest thing because in investing and in saving and in growing your net worth it's it's the snowball effect and it's the power of the compounding dollar that's going to get you there that's right. it's not going to be a get rich quick scheme it's not that you know we're not always going to see stocks like tesla go up 600 percent in a year <laughs> so that is that is not realistic over the long term or we, we probably will but we just won't have gotten into them well yeah exactly yeah. exactly <laughs> it's going to be too late yeah, that's right it's going to be too late so diversification and having a plan having a diversified portfolio of investments mm -hmm. where you start saving early little by little you dollar cost average you hit the markets on its highs hit the markets on its lows that's, right. that's how you build a strong solid portfolio where you can have success over time you know and I'll, I'll close out with this idea too looking back on it there are so many people I think coming into this year where we never would have imagined seeing what we've seen and it's been a great opportunity to check our ego check our ego as individuals as a collective society as family it's a great opportunity to realize that control is an illusion so to speak we can control our circle uh, we can control our emotions we can control how we react to things around us but there is so much that's out of our control and being prepared for the unknown mm -hmm. we, we we want to have a vision of what our future will all look like and the really the best way to increase the odds of realizing that life that you've earned so to speak to be able to live richly doesn't necessarily mean that you're the wealthiest person but that you have enough resources to live the life that you want mm -hmm. that's what living richly means and serve the people that you want and do the things that you love that bring you passion and it takes a certain amount of humility to be able to recognize that you're more likely to get there with help with other people with support, support. with a plan with other ideas we talk about diversifying assets I love to talk about diversifying ideas and diversifying support and making sure that no matter what happens, no matter where you are, you're surrounded by people that care about you, know what you care about, and are dedicated to helping you get there. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful in 2020 to have been able to join our team here at KPP and help me realize that goal of helping others mm -hmm. realize that. So and I think the most important point of what Kyle just hit on is that it's it's your it's your goal, it's your thoughts on what brings you joy, what brings you success. You can't compare yourself to the Joneses, so to speak. Kyle yeah. did a video. If you check us out on our website in our resource center and on our social media, there's a really good video that Kyle did. It's called The Thief of Joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Kyle's the expert on it and can talk about it for forever probably, but if you compare yourself to others, that's what's going to rob you of that joy of being able to, as Kyle mentioned, realize the life that you've earned, live mm -hmm. richly. Comparing yourself to others is going to rob you of that, so Agreed. remembering well that remembering that as you set goals and as you think about what you want to accomplish, make it yours. Mm -hmm. You know, don't Don't compare yourself to the Joneses because... You know who knows what's going on in their life. It's just, it's just not um, not the best way of thinking and living, in our opinion. It's beautiful. It's true. It's beautiful. So, with that said, on behalf of Ben, myself, and everyone here at Kentucky Planning Partners, we wish you all a great 2021. We appreciate everybody tuning in week after week. We're excited about the content that we have coming forward. Uh, in 2021, we have great guests that we have mm -hmm. lined up, business owners and business leaders throughout Louisville and beyond. 
we have great content that we're going to be diving into and we're going to be expanding the platform. So for all the feedback and everybody watching, thank you so much. Share this, share our page with anybody that's out there. And again, if you ever need anything, if you need help, questions, you're looking to get started or you're about to retire or you're trying to figure out how to take care of maybe an elderly loved one or your children, anybody in between. There's no financial question that we're not here prepared and have the resources to help you solve. We're in the heart of Louisville's east side on the corner of Hurstbourne and Shelbyville Road, the best view in Louisville at the top floor of the Flash Cube building. Our phone number is 502-394-0400. And at Kentucky Planning Partners, again, we're here and dedicated to provide you with advice for life so that you can all live richly and realize, realize the life that you've earned. Thank you so much. Thank you.